In this video, I'm going to look at how pH changes in acid-base titrations. We're going to have a look at strong acid, strong base titrations, strong acid, weak base, and weak acid, strong base. But let's start right back at the beginning. Strong acid, strong base titrations. So these are the first types of titration that we might come across. I'm thinking, for example, um, where we are titrating hydrochloric acid against sodium hydroxide. And obviously we're going to make a solution of sodium chloride and water. And if I'm to remove the spectator ions, those would be the sodium and the chloride ions, then I'm left with the ionic equation for neutralization. Hydrogen ions react with hydroxide ions to form water molecules. And this is happening in a molar ratio of 1 to 1. Now, during a titration, when the concentration or the moles of hydrogen ions equals the moles of hydroxide ions, then we have neutralization. So that's the first key bit to be um, clear about. So neutralization is when H plus is equal to OH minus. And this is known as the equivalence point. For a strong acid, strong base titration, the equivalence point, and the equivalence point is going to be at pH 7. So that um, equates for when the hydrogen ion concentration equals the hydroxide concentration. This is not the case for other types of titration, and I'll explain why when we get there. If I were asked to sketch over the top of this a curve for a strong acid, strong base, but starting with a lower concentration of acid, I would see pretty much exactly the same trajectory. And we've got our nice steep part here at the equivalence point. And this would be for a lower concentration of our acid. We're still talking about a strong acid. So we see equivalence point remaining at around about pH 7. So let's look at how the curve changes when we are titrating a weak acid and a strong base. The first thing to note is the equivalence point is greater than pH 7. I'll explain that in a second. The next thing I would like to draw your attention to is the first part of the curve the shape of this curve has changed. The pH changes far more slowly to begin with than it would do for a strong acid, strong base titration. The second part of the curve remains exactly the same. So let's pull this apart and do some explaining. So let's start by explaining the change in the shape of the curve at the beginning of the titration. So this is a weak acid, strong base. Perhaps we are titrating ethanoic acid. Um, against sodium hydroxide, in which case we would be making sodium ethanoate, CH3, CWO minus, Na plus, and water. At the beginning of my titration, what I have in my conical flask, so at this point here, before I've added any of my sodium hydroxide, is a weak solution of ethanoic acid. And because it's a weak acid, it is not fully dissociated. So I have in my conical flask, essentially an equilibrium system where we have lots and lots of the ethanoic acid molecules. So, High concentration of ethanoic acid molecules because it's a weak acid, very few of them dissociate, but I also have some of the ethanoate ion, the anion. What I've got therefore is a buffer solution because I have both the acid, so the weak acid, and its conjugate base present in my conical flask. So when I start to add, let me just change colour here, when I start to add hydroxide ions from my burette into my conical flask, 
then what's going to happen is that the first thing is that they will react with the hydrogen ions present uh, in the solution. As a result of that, position of this equilibrium is going to shift to the right. More of my ethanoic acid molecules are going to start to dissociate, which replaces the hydrogen ions. Now, pH is equal to minus the log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So if the hydrogen ion concentration isn't changing and then changes very slowly, the pH will also change very, very slowly to start with. Now, with a weak acid strong base titration, neutralization is still going to be the point at which the moles of hydrogen ions equal the moles of hydroxide ions. So how come the pH at the equivalence point is greater than 7? Well, the answer lies with one of the products. The ethanoate ions that are produced as a result of this neutralization reaction react with water to form ethanoic acid molecules undissociated and hydroxide ions. And it is the presence of these hydroxide ions which causes the equivalence point to be alkaline, i.e. at a pH greater than 7. And finally, let's consider um, a titration curve for a titration between a strong acid and a weak base. So my example here might be hydrochloric acid reacting with ammonia to form ammonium chloride. In solution. In this particular um, case, we would add the acid from the burette to the weak base solution, which explains why my curve is essentially back to front. I start off with a very high pH because I'm starting off here with a solution of ammonia. So, once again, this initial solution of ammonia contains both the weak base and its conjugate acid. So what we have in our conical flask is a, another buffer system. So NH4 plus aqueous plus hydroxide ions. Which means that as we slowly add acid to our weak base, the H plus ions react with my hydroxide ions and essentially they're immediately removed from the solution. So if the hydrogen ion uh, concentration doesn't change or changes very, very slowly to begin with, then the pH will also change very, very slowly to begin with. You'll also notice that for a strong acid weak base titration, the equivalence point is less than seven, typically around pH five. And we've got exactly the same explanation. As the ammonium chloride is formed, so we get to the point where uh, we have neutralization. So the hydrogen ion concentration uh, is equal to the hydroxide ion concentration, so we have neutralization. However, the ammonium chloride that forms uh, reacts with water or hydrolyzes, so the ammonium ions react with water to form ammonia. and the oxodium or the hydronium ion, i.e. H+. So because we have hydrogen ions or oxonium ions in solution, then my neutralized solution is acidic. You can get your head around that.